Welcome to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy. Be sure to stay tuned at the end of the show to hear how you can access the full interview and get related links. And now it's time for Carrie McCoy to get all up in your business. Thank you, Tim. I'm Carrie McCoy, and like Tim said, it's time for me to get up in your business. I absolutely love this show for its diversity and guests. Last week, we interviewed the retired, but really hardworking still, four-star General Wesley Clark, and today our interview, interview is with Sammy Lal, the friendly and well-known owner of the Star of India restaurant in West Little Rock, Arkansas. The dichotomy of these two successful and inspiring individuals who are living the American dream is a perfect example of how alike and connected we all are to each other. The real, this realization makes it easy to treat people the way you would like to be treated and makes the job of being a responsible employer or employee easier. With that said, my guest today, the restaurateur, Sammy Law, is innately aware of his human connection as evidenced by the way he treats everyone, and I mean everyone that comes into his restaurant as family. For the next hour, Sammy and I will be getting up in his business of growing up in India, moving to America, opening his restaurant, The Star of India, and hear how he is joyously and gratefully and prayerfully living the American dream. The show will end with the conversation about his menu and the healing powers of Indian spices. I was blown away when I read the Wall Street Journal article about turmeric, the main spice in curry. This information is very encouraging for people with all kinds of health issues. If you can't stay till the end of the show, next week a podcast and transcript will be made available at flagandbanner.com. Just click on the tab labeled radio show and search for this episode. It's worth listening to. Through our storytelling, my guest and I tell how we maneuvered with integrity the path of independence and leadership in pursuit of our dreams. My business experience began over 40 years ago when I founded Arkansas Flag and Banner, now known simply as flagandbanner.com. During the last four decades, Flag and Banner has grown and morphed from door-to-door sales to telemarketing to mail order and catalog sales and and now relies heavily on the internet. Each change in sales strategy required a change in company thinking and procedures. My confidence, leadership, knowledge, and my company grew. My initial $400 investment now produces nearly $4 $4 million in annual sales. Each week on this show, you'll hear candid conversations between me and my guest about real-world experiences on a variety of businesses and topics that I hope you'll find interesting. Running a business or organization is like so many things. It takes persistence, perseverance, and patience. I worked part-time jobs for nine years before Arkansas Flag and Banner grew enough to support just me. It's now grown and expanded so much that to operate efficiently, we require 10 separate departments and 25 people to manage them, reminding us all again that small businesses are the fuel for our economic engine. Before we start, I want to introduce the people at the table. We have Tim Bowen, our technician, who will be managing the board. Say hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. Today, Tim and I have learned to do something new, haven't we, Tim? That's right. This is our first pre-recorded show. And poor Jason had to edit it all. He's worked all week. I think these pre-recorded shows are harder than the live ones. Per our guest request, it's recorded. It wasn't our idea. Because as you will soon hear, Sammy is never away from work, not even for free publicity. So you know what they say. If the mountain won't come to Muhammad, then Muhammad must go to the mountain. And that is how this show came to be. My guest today, Sammy Lal, is the founder and the owner of Starve India Restaurant in Little Rock, Arkansas. Sammy was born in India, north of Punjab, near the famed and very holy Golden Temple. He started in the restaurant business in 1973 as a supervisor of a continental cuisine restaurant in West Germany, of all places. Eventually, Sammy landed in Dallas, Texas, where he lived and worked for several years. He then moved to Little Rock and founded the Starve India an unassuming restaurant known for its fragrant spices, above average service, and yes, Sammy's unwavering hospitality and love of life. It is a joy to welcome to the table the hardworking, forever grateful founder and working owner of the Star of India restaurant. I hope you enjoy this recording. Hello, Sammy. Hello, ma'am. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Fine, thank you. 
Sammy, your restaurant has received the Arkansas Times Reader's Choice Award more than once. It's been called the best Indian cuisine in Arkansas and has been nationally recognized by TripAdvisor.com as number nine on the list of places to eat in Little Rock. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's true. Praise the Lord. Why do you think you've been so successful? Well, the 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 reason behind when whoever comes to my restaurant I always treat just like my family's come. And I treat just like my family, I'm treating my home kids and I home my relative and my home older and elder and children and middle. That's why I love everybody from my heart. That's what I'm doing. Plus I work very hard trying to make a customer happy. And myself happy, too. That's what I'm doing. That seems like a simple recipe for being successful. You are known by everyone. When I mention to people that you were coming on the show, it seems everyone knows you, and they all said the same thing to me. Ask him how he remembers everyone's name. So, Sammy, how do you yes. remember everyone's name? Well, there is a God gift I have it, which is I don't want to lose it. I will pray the people and how people pray for me. I will still remember the name for everybody. Well, when people come, if God comes to my tongue to remind me the name of whoever, which is I know the person. So you are giving the credit to God who gives you yes. the skill to mm -hmm. remember people's names. Yeah, that's true. I'm nothing. I'm just a servant. I'm doing my job. If God comes to my tongue, he's saying, I'm not seeing, saying anything. God is comes to my tongue. He is saying the name. Who is the person? Who is Holly? And who is Neela? Who is Mr. Smith? And who is John? And who is Mr. Miller? Do you know what I mean? That's why he comes to my tongue. I am nothing. I'm just like you. I love that answer. My daughter has been coming to the Star of India since she was a teenager. She says that you are always there. Is that true? Yeah, it, this is my, it, it, darling, this is my second home, by the way. <laughs> I, I always here because I don't want to miss my friend who comes to eat and who comes to see me. That's why I'm always here, though. I'm dependent on the people. That's why I like to see the people. I don't want to miss my people if I'm not here. That feeling is so contagious when people come into your restaurant. They all feel that about you. What do you attribute your excellent work ethic to? Well, I work very hard just like, you know, if I work 24 hours, and I'll be happy to do it for the people. It's just like... Uh, I met your son, and uh, long time ago, so many years ago, and uh, when I met him first time, he was very impressed, and he bring whole family, and you know your other son too. It's just like I'm working very hard to bring a whole family. I love one person; they bring a whole family. I love the other person also. That's why I'm working very hard to make people happy. Is is this part of your culture from India? Or is this something that is just unique to you? Well, it, it, it's only me. I don't, I, I don't want to involve the culture because my culture, all the culture is good. My culture is good too. I follow the culture also. I follow my own philosophy also. So we do a good job for the people and respect always. Just like, you know, when you go to the church, you pray over there, and to make the God happy, and if somebody comes to your door, I always thinking is God has come my home to make them happy. It doesn't matter female or male. That's why I'm trying to do work very hard. That is the true gift of a servant. Sammy, tell our listeners where you grew up. I grew up uh, grew up over there in India, Punjab. I left Punjab to in Germany. I live over there three years. I was continental head chef in Germany. I cook, uh, Spani uh, I cook uh, Spain food, French food, German food, Italian specialist cook. 
I've been doing work over there three years. Then I came to the United States in 1982. In the United States, I was live over there in Dallas, Texas. I had business over there. Dallas, Texas, I was operating the business. I have a good recommendation. People come to eat over there too. And I was doing under Lord blessing and people blessing. Remember the name over there too when I was over there in Dallas. Like I have a God gift. Then 1993, I came to uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. I've been, before I come, I was running every week. I left 4 o'clock in the morning from Dallas to Little Rock, Arkansas. I come 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock every Wednesday uh, in the morning to uh, Little Rock to look at around which place is good for me to open the business. Hardly, almost one year I did it, 1991 to 1992, then I decided to find the West Plaza shopping center where we, I am right now here. Then I opened the restaurant here in 1993 in the United States, Arkansas, Little Rock. Serving you, God gave me opportunity, and you guys blessing me to give me opportunity to serve the food here. That's what I'm doing here in the United States. That was a great story. I want to go back to the beginning, though, and ask if you were the head chef in Germany, West Germany, I know, but were you the head chef in India? Did you originally begin in the restaurant business when you lived in India? No, I was poor student, darling. <laughs> I was, uh, poor I was, student, I, darling. I left so, over there, and, and uh, I quit the school. Then I left from there to see the Germany to try to make the money, for, uh, you know, for the for my family. And that's a true story I'm telling you. I worked very hard over there, just like 16, 16 hour a day, then to, to handle the, all the, the money problem in my back uh, family, then uh, work over there three years in Germany. Then I came to the Dallas. We, I work over there, you know, uh, in my business over there. I was cooking chef over there. And I was not cooking over there in Dal- uh, India when I was there. I was, didn't do even uh, take my glass to wash it up. All the, all the mother and sister, they wash, uh, clean it up, the, uh, your dishing too, you know, when you eat. I didn't do anything work over there for the cooking business, but I did work very hard over there too when I was a student. I did work very hard over there in India when I was not a student. What did you study as but a student? I just studied just natural study. I didn't do any diploma over there. That's why I didn't. If how, I would have a diploma. How old were you when you left India? Oh, man. I was 25 years old. About 20, 24, 25. Did you have a job in India after you got out of school? Did you have any kind of a job at all in India? No, I had uh, my parents had own business, which is uh, we didn't survive that much business. You know, over there in India is a totally different story. If one parents work and they control whole family, then it's not everybody was working over there when I was there. Right now, if you have a five member in the family. And everybody working and make money and put it together and survive the life over there. When I was over there in India, India we have a, a three brothers and two sisters and my father and my mother. My father was only making the money. I was helping my father. It's kind of small business when you do it, make money in the evening, do other business tomorrow also. Same business, to uh, do it again. That's why I did it. So what was your father's business? My father has a grocery store, Indian grocery store. That was not big, that was small. And plus we had one uh, government gave us shop to open the poor people. We did open that business too, my father had it, like kerosene oil, sugar. Over there was, uh, you know, people poor, they didn't have money, and government gave opportunity to give them money, and they gave us one shop, and we was uh, doing business also over there. That was not great uh, money-maker business but surviving the business also. And that business, we put a grocery store together, and that's what we're doing over there. Are your parents still alive? My father is, unfortunately, is gone almost 22 years. My mom, she's 90 years old. She's still under God's blessing. She's under life. Do you send money home to your parents, to your mother? 
Well, I do send it sometime, not all the time, because I have a, my brother, uh, big older brother over there, his family over there. I have a couple of sisters over there, and they are over there. They are con uh, they are taking care of my mom. They don't need money. They have good enough money. Because oh, we I had a see. Because we have a pretty, uh, we have a watch tools business over there in India. For like watch, watch tools. wrist, for like watches. Yeah, watches, tools, and jewelry tools. You know, and surgical tools they make it over there. We we have a manufacturing company over there. Well, I I sounds like your family is doing very well. When was the last time you went to you went to your homeland? Yeah, you're breaking my heart now. I've been there 19 years ago. <laughs> You're going to have to take 19. some time off work. No, see, I don't I work very hard here and I don't want if I go over there and by the time I come here, then I don't want the, my customer is this my family people whoever comes to eat here, which is I don't call the customer. I always call family people just like you understand me what I, what I mean. Customer, I never call. I always call my family member. And I don't want to lose them. That's why I didn't go over there. Other way, they ask me all the time. Whenever I spoke to mom, I spoke every couple of days. Every three days, spoke to my mom. She said, come to see me before I die. I said, mama, you're not going to be died. Don't worry. I'll pray for you. That's why I didn't go over there 19 years ago. But my the older brother, three years ago, he comes to see me. Then his son and his daughter in law and their kids come to see me two years ago. They spent it with me one month. But I didn't oh, go over there. Oh, that's fabulous. That's so yeah. nice that they would come. So they have seen your restaurant. Oh, this, yeah, they say my home. You know, I got a house here. Eight, year, uh, eight years ago, I buy the house here. I have three daughters, which is they help, help me all the time. They're great people. I would ask the Lord that whatever children you gave to me, hey, God, give to everybody. I love that. So you never take a vacation? The vacation, I, it's, don't remind me when I saw my customer here. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do take some time, you know, to make uh, my feel self happy to take a little vacation. But it's not like people does it. It's not but like when I take vacation. When I take half day off or full day off, I put my wife here. I say, well, you stay here. I don't want my any family member comes to eat here. They go disappointed. So when you take time off, you put your wife in the store, in the restaurant. Yes, I have to be. I, this is the store I had it. And uh, I have three young daughter, which is I have to take care of all the fees, college fees and all those things. And, you know, that's what I'm taking care <laughs> Do they work in the restaurant, your daughters? Well, well, I'll tell you one thing, darling. They help me a lot. They do work sometimes. If I'm very busy, they look at in the camera. Daddy is too busy. Restaurant is too full. They're jumping very fast on me. Then they help me to standing up over there in the bar. And they're taking care of the customer. They're making check, which is a, a lot of help me to do that business. A camera in your restaurant so they can look from home to see if you need them. And then they come down there if you need them. That is the first yeah, time I've I, ever I, heard anybody yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah, they look at over there. Daddy is too busy. Mommy is too busy. And then they say, go. Hey, then even they don't call me, I'm coming. I, I look at over there. Hey, my daughter is here. I say, come on, baby, help me over there. I know that's why they look at the They say, Dad, we look at the camera. Oh, man, I know you are busy. You should call me. I say, honey, I don't want to disturb you. My older daughter, she's about 24, 25 years old. She works with the HP company. And she works over there in Conway. I said, baby, I don't want to disturb you. That's why they said, Dad, you should call me anytime. I'll be happy to help you whenever I am home. But I cannot come from Conway to help you here. But she always does help me all the computer system, all the technology, whatever. I need some additional job, which is I don't want to do that. And she helped me also. I have two other daughters. They always help me some. One daughter is doing design for me. Another is doing for me a different uh, work for me. But they do work for me. But I can trade the business with them too. Sometimes they need a computer. I say, baby, I'll get you that computer. You can help me that one. They say, okay, Dad, we'll do. Oh, I love that. Were they born in America or were they born in India? God, God, bless, God bless America. They born in Little Rock. 
Oh, I love that. So you were born yes. near the Holy Temple in India. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, And ma'am. I'm sure you've been there. Did you Have you ever worshipped there? Yes, I did. I always worship every single day before I come to the restaurant at home. Then when I come to the restaurant, I worship here also in my restaurant. I ask the Lord, hey God, I don't need anything from you. I just need from whoever comes to eat here and they are happy. Whatever we cooking, we can make a good job to make them happy. And hey God, I want you to be stay with us all the time. I don't need anything else besides three items. And I need a good health from people, whoever comes to eat here, and good health from my family, and good health from the Lord. Hey, God, bless everybody. What is the religion of India? I am Hindu, but I do believe everybody. I do believe Christian. I do believe Baptist. I do believe everybody, human being, is the same. But I believe every single religious. It's not only I am believing Indian Hindu religion. I am 100% Hindu. But I do believe every uh, all the religions. When you went to Germany, how old were you? Oh, Jesus, I was over there uh, about 25, 26 or something. And how did you find that job in Germany? Well, that's a good question. I, when I came to the Germany, I had a friend. I take the train from Oldensburg to Hamburg. And I, I, then somebody say, uh, the guys was over there close to uh, where I live over there in India, Punjab. And I was helping his mom when he left. He had uh, some kind of business. I was collecting money, whatever the people owed him money. And he was saying, well, one day I will take care of that, whatever you're doing for my mom. His mom was about 75 years old. I was buying grocery for them over there and collecting money. Whoever gave it to me, I gave it to his mom. He said, well, whenever you come in Germany, I'll be happy to help you. When I came to the Germany, Hamburg, then he said, well, Let's start work with the dishwasher. I say, I'll be happy to do it, whatever work we had. Then I start work with their dishwasher. Then God gave me very opportunity. The boss was very sharp. He looked at me. He said, this man, his boy is very sharp. And he's doing everything, you know, those things. Then he said, don't do dishwasher, do something else. I did something else to come up the big shape of there. Then one day, there was 18 shape work for me. Under my job, then I was sitting like, you know, I'm a king over there, and I was tasting the food over there. That's why I did the job over there. Tasting the food? Tasting the food. First, I was cooking the food. Then I was tasting the food only because he was, he trusted me very much. He said, don't do work, just tasting the food, or whenever the chef cooks the food. I say, okay. He trusts yeah. you very much. So it was continental cuisine in West Germany. You started as yes. a dishwasher and you became a food taster at the very end because he trusted you so much. What is continental cuisine? Well, they have a food over there, German food, French food, Italian food, Spain food, and all kind of food. I was head chef. Then, they, then he said, well, you are perfect. You don't need a more cooking job. You are sitting job. You need a sitting job and tasting job. That's it. Moved you from the head chef to a sitting job and tasting. That sounds like a pretty good job. So why did you leave West Germany and go to Dallas, Texas, when you had a sitting tasting job? You asked me a very good question, darling, which is uh, you remind me of my, my small child life. When I was going to school over there, I was fourth grade school, fourth grade, and I looked the book over there, American flag, be honest with you. And United States, America, all those things, the story over there, each school, uh, each class, they have uh, one book, they have a paragraph over there, America. Then when I saw, I was a little child, you know, I was fourth grade, I said, well, this is America flag. I hope one day the dreams come true, it's take me to the America, but I will go over there if the Lord is blessing me. That's why I did it touch down to the America. So you always wanted to be in America, and you went That's right. from India. You went from Germany. India, where you were helping this man's mother, to West Germany, where he gave, where the man gave you the job, and then you went from uh, West Germany to America to, because you always to wanted Dallas, to be there. America, uh, I came to the America. And, then, and how uh, did you get the job that, in America? What was the opportunity that came along that you said, "This is my opportunity. I'm leaving." What happened? Okay, what happened, there is two people was here. 
I didn't have a job. I didn't have anybody here in the United States of America. The people was wearing summer time, summer clothes. I was wearing summer time, winter clothes because I didn't have money. I was looking for the money just like people walk on the street, you know. Then one of the doctor, he, I, I think he's passed away. He and Dr. Vediker and Mrs. Kim Vediker, the, the both dentist doctor over there in Dallas, one time I had a problem, and, uh, you know, I go over there, you know, go walk through there. I find the dentist place over there, and they did a treatment theory for me. And they say, what do you do? I say, nothing. And uh, they say, well, uh, where are you staying? I say, there are people staying. I, I was staying with the, one of the guys, Indian guys. He let me stay over there. He said, why you wear this kind of clothes? I say, I don't have it, this kind of clothes. Uh, summer clothes I don't have. I said, please help me to do it, get me a job. You can ask your uh, culture who, uh, how I am, I am a good person or bad person. He said, no problem. Then he find job for me. I work for one of the hotel. I work over there very hard. Then I quit the, from hotel to work, start with the business, restaurant business. How did you go from West Germany and move to Dallas, uh, Texas? Texas? I came to the, uh, Dallas to West uh, Germany uh, to Dallas, Dallas to come later on. That's why I did it. So did you start working in the restaurant business in Garland, Texas? No, I was doing a hotel. Then I, uh, after the hotel work, I quit the job up there. Then I was doing a uh, restaurant business. I see, I see. And was your English very good at that time? Uh, so so. <laughs> you know, when I when I come new, I was very nervous. You know, you know, I speak good. People talking to me English. I was talking to them German. <laughs> In German. How many languages do you speak? Lord is blessing. I speak few languages. I speak German. I speak a uh, few Eng- Indian languages. I speak a little bit English too. Did Did you own your own restaurant in in Texas? Yeah, that was my business partner. We uh, have a partner business. You went to work for a hotel. How did you end up owning your own restaurant in Texas? Well, I went to, uh, you know, one day I was uh, pretty uh, upset. You know, I said, well, I, I, I have to be stuck here all the time. It's better to move around from there to go to the restaurant business. I was talking to them. One of the guys from South Africa, he said, well, uh, you are from Punjab, and you have, you know, should go. What you looking for? I say I have restaurant experience. Then I go to the restaurant. And so you went into restaurant business together. He took me from there because I didn't have a car that one. He said, I'll take you over there. I say, okay, we'll go. Over. Then I went to there. Over. Then I start restaurant business. I met the friend over there. We'll work over there. Then we put it over there. Some business part. So you met a friend from South Africa who took you to eat at an Indian restaurant, and you began to work at the Indian restaurant. And after a while, and he saw what a hard worker you were, you became partners of that Indian restaurant. Yeah, the different restaurant. Yeah, they know, you know, everybody knows us. Huh? is here, he's working hard worker or whatever. Just like, you know, whenever the time has come, God makes a connection to make a good time to be grow up, though. Yes, when the time is right, God does make the connection for you. I hear what you're saying. I think this is a great place for us to take a quick break. So I think that there's a reoccurring theme, Tim, in everything that he says. Of course, he gives praise to God every time. Absolutely. And there was something that I heard in this last segment that I want to clarify for everybody, because I've realized Sammy's English is a little bit hard to understand sometimes. But he had a theme. He was working for a friend of his in India when he was about 25, who he was he was the 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 gentleman had moved to Canada and his he was watching his garden oh no actually that's different he was helping his mother when he was in India he was helping this man's mother who had moved to West Germany and when he went and and the man said for helping my mother why don't you come to West Germany and I'll get you a job at this restaurant he got a job at this restaurant worked extremely hard went from the dishwasher to the head chef to the sitting and tasting uh Right. Isn't that cute? What a great job. I know. I want that job. And and then he decided to come to America and stayed with another friend. He had some dental problems, went to work at the dentist. The dentist said, let me buy you some summer clothes. You look like you're burning up in your winter clothes. And introduced him to another man who took him to a restaurant, an Indian restaurant, 
where he ended up getting a job and again started as the busboy and eventually ended up owning part of that restaurant and became part owner. So friends helping friends created opportunities that you hear all the time through these themes in our shows is that you never know who's watching and then working hard at whatever job you're doing and you never know where it's going to lead. So when we come back, we're going to have Sammy tell us how in 1993 he financed and opened his highly successful restaurant, The Star of India in Little Rock, Arkansas. And we'll have him tell us about his menu, healthy spices, and his favorite dish. In the last segment, uh, Sammy told us about being a poor student and in India and then he talked about how when he was a young when he was the student he opened up a book and saw the American flag and read a little bit about America and decided he wanted to come live here from even as a young youth I just think that speaks volumes about our country and he talked about his culture over there which I think is lovely where the whole family works for the common good of the whole family yep. where the uh, father had a grocery store and a garment store business and he worked there till he was 25 years old, and at that time he moved to uh, West Germany. Mm -hmm. And that his brother is still currently there in a very interesting business. It took me a while to, under to try to figure out what he was saying, but his older brother has a manufacturing of tools for jewelry and watches. Yeah, so the tools that people use to fix jewelry and watches are what they manufacture. You just, there's just yes. a job doing all everything in there. Yeah. Um, so he... Um, he, uh, he, he doesn't have to send money much, he says, anymore because they're doing great over there. And his, brother's take, and his brother and sister are taking care of his mother, who's 90-something years old, and his father's passed away. During this next segment, Sammy is going to tell us how in 1993 he financed and opened his highly successful restaurant, The Star of India in Little Rock, Arkansas. And we'll have him tell us about his menu, favorite dishes, and the healing powers of the traditional Indian spice turmeric. Sammy, your parents were not in the restaurant business. You got in the restaurant business in West Germany so that you could get out of India with the plans of always coming to America. You did move to Dallas, Texas, where you became partners of an Indian restaurant there. And then you decided to move to Little Rock, Arkansas. Why did you pick Little Rock, Arkansas? I love Arkansas. How did you know about I, Arkansas? Okay, well, see, when I was over there in Dallas, <clears throat> sometime I was sitting over there, I was meeting a lot of... Uh, People from Arkansas, a little bit, they go over there to eat. Then they say, well, why don't you come to open the restaurant over there in the, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas? Then I say, well, one day you never know when his time is come, then we hopefully we'll go over there. But he told us, hey, well, after two years, you cannot have a more restaurant. You cannot have a more place. I cannot rent you any more place. Then we say, okay. Then the period time that one... I did it one year continuous comes to look at that here. I was like I told you before about a few minutes ago. And then I find the place here. I, when I came, there was no restaurant. When I come, I open a restaurant. So many people come and go. I say, well, whatever luck mine, I'll take it. But whatever luck somebody else, they'll take it. That's why I comes to open this restaurant here, 1993. I love that. Whatever luck mine, I'll take it. Whatever luck theirs, they'll take it. So That's yours right. was actually the business that you were in, the restaurant you were in in Dallas. It was losing its lease, and so you were going to have so the business was going to close, and you figured that was a sign from God, and you liked Arkansas and decided to move up here. What did your family think when you told them you were going to move them to Little Rock, Arkansas? Well, when I came, I was. Uh, New married person over here. <laughs> I married. I married India. You know, nine. You know, then my wife was over there in India. When I came to open this restaurant, I bring my wife from there to here in Little Rock. And when my uh, I had one baby over there, older daughter. She was born in India, 1992, uh, uh, March 1992 over there in India. Then she was one and a half year old. And she, uh, I bring her here. Then I have two other children. They born here little Rock. And when my wife come, I say, how do you like it? She say, hey, honey, where is my husband go? I have to follow. I have to stay over there too. And she is very nice sweetheart, by the way. In India, do the parents uh, arrange the marriages for you? That was a good question. I didn't see her before I married. And there was my parents arranged marriage. You know... That's not all bad. I think maybe my parents might have made some pretty good decisions for me when I was young. 
<laughs> I don't think that'd go in, in America very well, though. She sounds like a lovely person. So to open a business in Little Rock, Arkansas, do you have to be a U.S. citizen to get a city permit? It's not necessary, but I was U.S. citizen when I was open this restaurant. That is not necessary. I did not realize that. No, see, if you have a green card, you can open business. But I have I was American citizen when I applied permit city of permit license. What is the first thing you did when you came to Arkansas to open your restaurant? I first thing I pray here. Where? At what I, church? At what? I sin- pray here. Prayed? Yes, I prayed here. Then I say, Hey God, I'm not asking me so, so many things. I'm not asking you so many things. I'm asking good health. And pray, help me all the time. Stay with me all the time. Don't move from my heart. I'm under your feet. I love that. Don't move from my heart. I don't ask many things. I'm under your feet. That's lovely. Yes. So what? So did you go? The very first thing was to pick out your location, or did you pick yes. out, or did you plan your menu like first? The, no, I picked up the location here. I was building the location here, construction doing here. Then I make a menu when I go step by step. I didn't do, you don't need a menu before you build the restaurant. You need a menu when you set up the restaurant. Then you need a menu. That's why I did it by step by step. So where is the restaurant? What is the address of the restaurant? We've had a caller that called in and wants to know. He travels through Little Rock from Dallas to Little Rock, and he wants to know what your address is exactly. 301 North Shackleford Road. Little Rock, Arkansas. And what are your hours, Sammy? I, we open 11 to 2.45 every single day. Lunch buffet, we have it. Then we have a 5 o'clock to 10 o'clock a la carte menu. You know, we open seven day a week. But we do Christmas Day, Christmas day and Thanksgiving Day, we close. But other, other, other way, we open every single day under Lord blessing. Every single day till 10 o'clock, except for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's? Is that, I hear that right? No, no, no. Only Thanksgiving and Christmas Day we close, and 363 days we open every single day. 363 days a year. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you started your restaurant, and you obviously have broken English, did you find that people were helpful? Well, <clears throat> my broken English is, like I said, that I always take in front of me, God, say, God help me. Then he go through somewhere, he make a connection for me. It sounds like he has made lots of great connections for you. When there, was there anything that, that you were, when you found you were opening your restaurant, was there any obstacle that you thought might keep it from happening? Well, um, no. Did you use your own money that you had saved to open your restaurant? Yeah, I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> That's a very interesting story I'm telling you. You can tell your friends too, darling. When I opened the restaurant, I didn't have a money. I went to the pick up the glass from the Emco store. You know the water glass. I didn't have it. Then I. You went to pick up what from the Emco store? Water oh, glass. Oh, thing. glasses from yeah, the gla- restaurant supply store. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Then I said, "Can you bill it to me?" He said, "No, no, 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 no." I said, "Why?" The restaurant business. When somebody builds the restaurant, after they broke, they cannot give money to anybody. <laughs> I say, "So what do you want?" He said, I need money right now, then I'll get you glasses. I gave my credit card to get a couple of case glasses from there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably a good good plan not to loan money to opening yep. restaurants. I love the name of your restaurant, the Star of India. But having grown up so close to the Golden Temple, I might have been tempted to choose that name. How did you pick the name of your restaurant, The Star of India? Well, it's a, you know, I follow the religious. I ask my priest over there uh, what restaurant name I can use it. They say, you can use Star of India. It's good luck for you because uh, and that's why I come up our mind, and that's why I use it. So your priest named your restaurant? Yes, please. Well, I looked up The Star of India. It is a 500-carat blue sapphire. Uh, From the outside of your restaurant, you don't realize how big it is or how decorated it is. Can you talk about the decorations inside? The decoration we tried to, is I did a decoration, only decorated style, Indian style. And uh, the the arches we have it, I think about... uh, Fifty year, fifty thousand year old than the new uh, the interreligious art, 
and they build this kind of arches, which is I did it. And uh, plus, I build a new room here, which is a party room. If somebody had a, a private party or dancing party or a, pri- a birthday party or anything, I just built it six months ago. Sometimes if you will have, or any friends you will have, you can tell them there is a romantic uh, dining hall. I made it here, party area, which has projector and screen, and also decorated by Indian style too. I love that. I will tell them. Is uh, Did the decorations come from America, or did you order them from India? I order from India. The music is lovely also. But I must say that TripAdvisor, you would have had a five-star rating from TripAdvisor. You got a five on everything except for the music. I don't think TripAdvisor liked the Indian music, and I find it charming. Well, if you tell them, TripAdvisor, maybe they will come to listen again to music. I can turn in on American music for them, whatever music they like. I try to make happy everybody. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, Every restaurant has something that they are known for, and I think I'm going to know the answer to this question, but when people think of your restaurant, what do you want them to think of? Well, I always think, just think about me and come to see me and help me to the business and pray for me. It's good health, and uh, I can end the way I'm running the business. That's where they can think yes. about me. I think when people think of your restaurant, they think of the hospitality, the great service, the great food. The Star of India is open in the morning. At what time? Lunch buffet. Lunch buffet, 11 to 245. 11 to 245, and has the very popular lunch buffet. Uh-huh. And in the evening time is a la carte menu. From 2.45 to 5.30, you close and you get ready for your dinner and the a la carte so menu. Two, it, no, we close two, 2.45 to 5 o'clock. Oh, to 5 o'clock. And then you prepare then for your dinner. we open 5 o'clock again. Is the lunch or the dinner menu very different from each other? The so dinner menu, I have about 300 dishes. You know, you can pick whatever you want, vegan or gluten-free or lamb or chicken or beef or shrimp or fish. And the lunch menu, we have a lamb or three chicken, 22 vegetarian salad bar, three dessert, and I mean so many fish or seafood, everything, beef also. I know that the lunch buffet is all you can eat and is extremely popular. Which would you say is more popular, the lunch or the dinner? Well, if you have a romantic date, you can come to dinner too, darling. Have a romantic dinner. If you have a romantic date and you're going to bring your own person, which is you love you from you, which which is you love from your heart, and you can have a candlelight in the evening, and you have a talk, and you can have a drink, a little shot, and tequila shot, or Johnny Walker, or whatever you want to do it, and you can have a candlelight dinner. There's a little romantic dinner for you at night time. That's nice. Is there a is there a liqueur or an alcoholic beverage that India is known for, like uh, the Asian culture loves sake and the Mexican culture loves tequila. What is India's alcoholic beverage hey, of choice? The, India, like uh, today, I don't call India anymore. I will call, still I call them, I will call them Mini America. Mini America. Yeah, so you, what whatever you're getting America? from here. Yeah, I don't call India anymore. I call Mini America, India. Mini America, India. I like that. Because whatever you're getting here, whatever you're getting here, you're getting there too. That's no problem. Oh, this is a great place to take a break. Oh, there it comes. So this is a great place to take a break. We're running out of time, and I really want to get to talk about his his menu because he um, he serves a lot of turmeric, which studies have shown, and there's a Wall Street Journal article written that he can give you when you go out to your restaurant that show that turmeric is an anti-inflammatory, cholesterol-lowering properties. Clinical trials have shown promising results for various cancers, Alzheimer's disease, skin disorders. In India, tradition calls for the bride to cover herself with turmeric to prevent wrinkles. Some mothers mix the powder with milk to ease upset stomachs. And Johnson & Johnson sells a turmeric Band-Aid in India because the powder is reputed to to help with healing wounds. I think it's all real interesting. Let's hear what Sammy has to say about his recipes. Sammy, how did you pick your menu? Are they family recipes? Uh yeah, well, I pick up the menu. Be honest with you. There is a India menu. They have it. Plus, I added up about 50, 60 dish, dishes from me. Uh, totally, what I'm cooking here is my own style, not from somebody other style. So, do you think that there's an influence of American flavors 
to make it more appealing to Americans? Did you take some traditional Indian dishes and kind of Americanize them? Yeah, see, I see. I have a lot of uh, client, American clients. Then I have some Indian and different culture, also nationality. But I see. I make cook. I cook for the fresh food. I see the person. I ask them how you want it. Indian style, mild or medium or hot, I can make that style for them. Is Indian style hot? Well, where I come from is not hot, it's kind of medium hot, where I come from. Indian food is okay. inherently gluten-free, it seems like. But, but Indian food is also cooked by Ayurvedic medicine, which is good for cancer, diabetes, heart patients, and all those things. I have a, one article, they spent $20 million on Wall Street Journal, they have an uh, article in my restaurant. It's spice, which is I use it, and you can come to pick up, and somebody can come pick up. I can give them uh, the article. They spent $20 million. They can research, and they put it over there in the article, and I can I distribute it to everybody, whoever wants to come. I gave it to them. Just like turmeric and cumin, they use it with all the food, and which is good for your health and good for cancer, <laughs> diabetes, all those problems away from that. Turmeric and cumin. And so you make a spice of your very own at your restaurant that yes, I did. the yeah, Wall Street I did. Journal wrote an article about, and you can come and buy it from you. Yeah, you can come pick up this uh, uh, article from me and give it to the people. They wrote it on Wall Street Journal article. I have it here. They wrote I think, it was 10, 15 years ago. I don't remember that when they wrote it. Well, I do know that there are lots of people that love Indian food because when they finish eating it, they don't feel – they've eaten a lot, but they don't feel very full. It's also inherently gluten-free, and it can be yes, yes. vegetarian. It is gluten-free and vegetarian and non-vegetarian, too. Non-vegetarian is also gluten-free, too. And, they, and you like to serve lamb. I've read on – you like to serve lamb. You serve a lot of lamb and uh, chicken. Is that right? Lamb, chicken, beef, shrimp, fish, veggie. How do you keep up with all the rest? I mean, you said you had how many uh, dishes on your menu? I have about 300 dishes, 250, 300 dishes. But they cannot all be on your menu. It does have all the menu uh, in the menu. I have a pretty walking cooler bit. I cook fresh. You cook fresh? Like how do come? you keep... How, How do you I keep, keep up with all of those? How do you keep up with all of those recipes and all of those items to cook at night? Just like you asking me so many questions in the interview, and how you keep it up, and that's your business to ask me that all those things, and that's why I'm keeping up with the, my business too. Perfect answer, and I completely understand that answer. <laughs> <laughs> So there's not a special Indian beverage that is popular in India that y'all all drink, that everyone drinks. It does have a non-alcoholic mango smoothie. It's mango lassi. Mango what? Mango lassi, mango juice, sweet lassi, made with the yogurt. Fresh yogurt. I have to make my own yogurt to make that mango drink. Oh, and you can get it at your store, at your restaurant, I mean. Yeah, a mango drink. So for some reason, when I think of Indian food, I think of curry. But you didn't mention that in your spices. You mentioned turmeric and cumin. Do you use a lot of curry? Well, that I made my own curry, which is I, If I tell you the spice, you can fill it up your whole list over there. Then the list will be never finished, whatever I tell you the spice I'm using. There is about 150, 200 spice I use it here. And like green cardamom, black cardamom, cinnamon, cinnamon. Uh, cloves and uh, you know black uh, like a lot of things over there like coriander cumin seed coriander powder i mean uh, bay leaves cloves a lot of things i use it uh, with the fresh garlic and ginger and onion and a lot of stuff we have it you know the curry, make a curry that is sounds confusing and i'm like only you sammy could could you know, put all that together and make it all work. I guess that's why you can't ever take any time off because you've got 300 dishes and 200 spices that only you have in your head because you've been given this gift from God that you speak about. Um, I have heard a lot about your tandoori. What a lovely in interview. We've run out of time. We had a little bit more of Sammy, but he, he really tells about, again, how much he loves his patrons he loves his family he loves his restaurant he loves america he probably said god bless america 10 times throughout that interview uh, if you would like to dine at sammy's at the star of india his address is 301 north 
Shackelford Road in Little Rock, Arkansas. And his buffet is 11 to 2.45 every day. He's at work every day. Even Sundays? Even Sundays. Every Ooh, day. He, I know what I'm eating this Sunday. There you go. He said uh, it's his home, his second home. Uh, and then he closes at 2.45 and reopens again at 5 with a uh, dinner menu from 5 to 10.30 p.m., which is actually kind of late for Little Rock, 10.30 every day, same hours. His work ethic is really unbelievable. So, again, it's the Star of India, Sammy, at 301 North Shackelford Road. Uh, who have we got next week, Tim? The mayor of Little Rock. Mark Stodola. That's right. I can't wait to hear about the technology. What's it called in downtown? The Technology Center in downtown Little Rock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, um, he's really doing great things for small businesses. He's got a beautiful technology center I went into not too long ago. Um, and to my uh, guest, uh, if you've got a great entrepreneurial story you would like to share, I'd love to hear from you. Send a brief bio or your contact info to questions at upyourbusiness.org. And someone will be in touch. And finally, to our listeners, thank you for spending time with me. If you think this program's been about you, you're right, but it's also been for me. Thank you for letting me fulfill my destiny. My hope today is that you've heard or learned something that's been inspiring or enlightening, and Sammy was definitely that, and that it, whatever it is, will help you up your business, your independence, or your life. I'm Carrie McCoy, and I'll see you next time on Up In Your Business. Until then, be brave and keep it up. You've been listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy. If you'd like to hear today's program again or like to download a free copy, go to flagandbanner.com, click the tab labeled Radio Show. There you'll find a podcast with links to resources you heard discussed on today's program. Carrie's goal to help you live the American dream. <laughs>